Hi. Hello, Hello. you fucks. <laughs> Look at that. Welcome to uh, to the Rambling Gramlin Show, your weekly source for MM audiobook news and entertainment. Ha! Hi. I'm excited. Ha! Ha! So I've got I've got <laughs> I I uh I was I was searching around on the internet as I am wont to do. I'm not sure what that means, but that actually leads me into this. I found I found a list of old timey sayings. And I'm very excited about this. All right. Um, now, stop okay. me if you've heard one of these before. Um, a wet sock. That means a limp handshake, apparently. A wet sock. You know, like a... Yeah, I've kind of heard that before, yeah. Yeah. He, he shook my hand like a wet sock. That's, that's how that one goes. Here's another one. Happy cabbage. It's apparently a sizable. Yeah, I had not. I'd heard cabbage, but it's a sizable amount of money to be spent on self-satisfying things. So. Oh yeah, I have heard that one. Okay. I knew you had because you've ordered a bullet before. So you traded your happy cabbage for a bullet. That's that's how that one went. Um, here's also another. I like this one. Flub the dub. I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you a guess. What do you think "flub the dub" means? No, no idea. Yeah, it means to evade one's duty. Now, I need to define that duty is spelled D-U-T-Y. That's not yeah. the D-O-O-D because evading it's pretty easy. It just comes out. It's not like it falls all over unless you squat. Because so uh, I bet you that "flub the dub" means something different in India. Than it does here because they do the squatting thing when they so i was very excited about this list when i found the list of old timey sayings i was like my goodness gracious this was made for me right here because i've been bringing back a few of them over the years if you've you know the uh i like the cut of your jib i brought that one back that's now in regular circulation everybody uses it um i think i'm going to bring back a couple of these too um like a butter and egg man. That's uh, th this is actually somebody likes butter and eggs. Well, that's what one would think, but no, it's a uh, it, it's a wealthy but unsophisticated small town businessman who acts like a playboy when he visits the big city. That's me. I'm a butter and egg man. Look at that. See. So I bet you the next time you see me, you're gonna say well, that John Cello, he's a butter and egg man. Which, by the way, I really do like butters and eggs. So, um, anyways, um, I like eggs too. They just don't like me. Yeah. Well, well, what do the eggs do? What do the eggs ever do to you? What the? What do you got against eggs? That is racist. I don't have anything that is against eggs. So racist against chickens. I can't believe you. Um, they so, don't like me. I like them. Yeah. So, oh, so you're saying that the chickens are racist? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Never. No, they just don't like me. <sighs> Hi. Um, so uh, we, Hi. we had a bunch of new releases this week. Sorry to get distracted, but I was very, I was very excited about my old timey words list. Um, well, let me let me pull these up here, and we're going to go through these. I think we got kind of a pattern hey, going Tracy. on now. Sorry. We got a. I it's all right. To Tracy. It's all right. I see. Um, here we go. Here, here's the first one of the day. Uh, first catch of the day. Yeah. Catch Me, Tattoos and Temptation, Book 4, by Mia Monroe, narrated by Kale Williams. That one came out on the 27th. We love Mia. We love Kale. Glad that... Uh, and, and we have a lot of come up that came out on the 27th. Well, quite Now, a few. Does, does, does Kale disagree with you like eggs? I'm just checking to see who's... who's uh... I don't eat kale, sorry. <laughs> have you ever tried... <laughs> Have you ever tried kale once in your life? Have you ever put kale in your mouth? No. No, but you know that you don't you don't like that. I don't like that. I don't I like that. It. Yeah, no, no, I get it. I understand. Next we had uh Peter Cabot gets lost. The Cabot's book 2 by Cat Sebastian, narrated by Joe Leslie. That's uh well, it, it's got it's got Peter in it, so we're, I can see where I don't that's know in that audience. He may have gotten found by the end of the book. Who knows? Yeah, I, don't, I, I bet you there's. I bet you somebody finds Peter in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, that one also came on the twenty seventh. Then we had the missing page. I see a theme here. Page and Somers, Somers, 
Book Two by Cat Sebastian, narrated by Joel Leslie. And that one also came out on the 27th. Then we had Dancing the Knife's Edge, Sacred Guardian Book Four by J.A. Jakin, narrated by Dan Callie. Now, I've met Dan Callie, and I would not. Here's, a, here's another one Zib. Z I B Zib. That describes a nincompoop, which when I was looking at the definition of that, I was like, well, I think nincompoop is actually more of an old timey saying because I'd never heard the word zib. But I would not describe Dan Callie as a zib. Uh, that one also came out on the 27th, and we have. Now, this one was interesting because it already came out once before. I'm guessing she re released it for some strange reason, but. Fake it till you make it out. Till you, bleh, words are hard. Fake it until you. Okay. Don't be a zib. Fake it till you make out. Love and Luck, Book One by Isla Olson, narrated by Joel Leslie. See, now I would have said Isla, but you know, they don't pay me to say words. Um, that one uh, re came out on the 28th. The 28th was also a big day, apparently. Then we had Kiss and Cry by Kira Andrews, narrated by Greg Boudreau. You mispronounced Tremblay. No, I didn't. That one uh, came out on the 28th. We love Kira. We love Greg. Then we had Iris, Mike Bravo Ops by Eden Finley, narrated by Alexander Sindis. And Tim Page. Another one was to give someone the wind. Now, this might have something to do with your your whole eggs don't agree with me thing. I don't really know. But it, in fact, it, it means to jilt a suitor, which is also pretty old timey, too. I guess a suitor is when somebody likes you. They would uh, they would approach you and, and try and woo you and like they would give you maybe a a rose person maybe they would do that maybe they you know ask you out to dinner i think they would probably have to approach your parents and ask them to be able to ask you out in these days but that is that would be the same thing as courting right right uh, courting which is also an old-timey saying when you think about it because we don't really go to court anymore i mean unless they're talking basketball courts because we do those now so maybe if you take a chick or to the basketball game court. what different kind of court would there i don't Get your input. But so th this would be to give someone the wind. So I think that to give someone the wind is actually like the meet cute scene. And and I think. Um, anyways, uh, the, the next one to come out here was. The night. A, no, a night with the lost boy. Night security book one by Christopher by chance. Christopher narrated by Blake Hayes. That one came out on the 28th. Trace has a good point. It could be to give someone the wind. It's kind of like getting the vapors. Uh, then we had. No. The Nerd Jock Conundrum, College Boys and New ha of New Haven series, book one by Hayden Hall, narrated by Cooper North. And that one came out on the 31st. There was a big gap there of several days. Do you think that perhaps, I don't know, ACX went yeah, away? Yeah, it was the weekend. Oh, they don't put them out on the weekend. Not, very, I not, not I usually. I, I'm learning things about this. Uh, then we have... Yeah, Saturday and Sundays. Saturday and Sundays are not big days for audios. Uh, you don't release on releases. Saturday or Sunday. They don't. Maybe they got the day off. Who knows? Well, they, they probably were flubbing the dub. Flubbing. <laughs> anyway, Nine Tenths of the Law by L.A. Witt, narrated by Andre Lash. Now, this is different. I thought that Ellie, from my experience, for the most part, Ellie Witt normally uses either Mike Fumulu or Nick J. Russo. Um, this is yeah, a, I know. That that shocked me when I saw that. I'm like, they, whoa, she let Michael out of his out of her basement. Exactly. I'm wondering what, what exactly is going on here. Um, Ellie Witt, if you could let us know why you've, you've reached out to another narrator. <laughs> We really would. did you did you fire Michael? Did you fire Nick J Russo? Like Ellie Witt watches this show. Um, she's she's not a zib. Um, then we had Death tells a tale 
the Paul Monroe series. Many miss. I cannot talk today. I like how you said. I, I like how you said tell and tail because those now mind you I have a hick Ohio accent but in your Floridian accent tell and tail actually sound very similar can you say death tells a tale again for me just once death tells a tale that was better that was not bad excellent um, good job I, I'm sorry I, I wasn't making funny or anything there I wouldn't do that oh no you wouldn't oh no the Paul Monroe mini mini series. I want yeah. to see miniseries. I know you reason. do. Mysteries. It's because you've watched ABC. No. Book four by Felice Stevens, narrated by Cale Williams. I'm such yeah, a hard 31st time. Yeah, 31st was a big 31st yeah. was a big day. Every time I say Felice Stevens' name, and hi, Felice, how are you? Um, every time I say her name, I always say Felice Navidad. I don't, every time. It's, I can't not do, so I'm like, Felice Stevens. Dun, 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 dun. So then we had. Oh, that one. Yay. The Lone, Lone Wolf's Omega, a tale of, from the, holy crap. <laughs> were, were you were you were you were you doing the this morning a little bit no. just so, just so, it's okay if you are it's, it's fine. cold it's, and it's cold and wet outside it's legal i guess i don't i don't know if it's here lone wolf's omega a tale from mercy from the mercy hills universe by Anne katrin bird narrated by nick j russo you know what's cool is when you mess up People don't jump in on the microphone and say, hey, hey, stop, stop, stop. Okay, just stop. You need to go back and fix that. That's, it's, it's a unique experience I have in life. Every time I mess up, people are like, they're jumping in. I actually pay them to do it. It's amazing. Um, yeah, th this, by the way, is a big deal that's coming out. I'm going to put this up on, on the screen for a second here. Um, for a long time in, in my early career, Every time I would mention um, this particular author, Anne Katrin Bird, um, they would always bring up this series. Now, Anne Katrin Bird has written a number of things other than this series, and they're fantastic. Um, but the, the confusion here was that people always thought that I narrated this series. It was, a, it was a going concern for a long time. I have to tell you, I am not, in fact, Nick J. Russo. Um, I am in fact, this guy, the John Solo thing, but it, it's a big deal. Um, and you were putting out more mercies, mercies, no mercy Hills stuff. Um, <laughs> and also I, I hear tell, I'm going to go back to this for a second. I hear tell that Nick J. Russo had to do some French in there too. I hear tell that that is in fact the case. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, let's hope he didn't flub the dub. Um, <laughs> and we, and we had this one. You're trying too hard to bring it back. <laughs> I didn't step on my duty. Oh, Lord. Anyway, Hunter's Creek by Victoria Sue, narrated by John Solo. That's me. Um, and, uh, of course, that's from our other favorite brick, Victoria Sue. Uh, then we had... Best Belly Buddies, the Team Spirit Series Book 2 by Kai Brightly and M.D. Gregory, narrated by Peyton Jin. Wong. When you say that, you have to say Peyton Jim Wong, like that. I think you should say it anyways. Um, I have no idea how to say your name, Peyton. I'm sorry. Um, but that one came out on the second. And then for our big final release, it's the final release. I like saying that. It's like a pine <laughs> overcoat. It's a final release. Um, yeah, there's another. I've, I've got a lot. I've got a whole. There's 83 of them that I have here to get through, and I'm only on like number nine. So I got more to go. You let me know oh, if Lord. you need if you need another old timey saying. You just let me. You now know where to go. Yeah, I can always look it up too. Uh, the last one is "Strings Attached" by Riley Hart, narrated by Iggy Toma. And that also came out on the second. Now, what everybody has been waiting for, and <laughs> amazingly mm -hmm. enough, it's this is a. Uh, it's not my old timey sayings. In fact, um, oh, by the way, here's my favorite. Well, here, I'm going to let you get into the, uh, the, the, the reason everybody's here, the rambling grambling show, but my favorite one, I've got one more that I'm going to use today and it's my favorite one. Okay. But let's see what you were listening to this week. We have, and I'm going to, there we go. You were listening to that? Got, really? Uh, yeah. Um, this was a bullet breaker. Oh my God. <laughs> 
This was my first D.J. Jameson book, and I absolutely loved it. I mean, I love the tro this trope anyway. It's like father's best friend, or it's age gap. Not, uh, it was like a daddy boy kink thing going on. So I knew I would enjoy it. Little did I know how much I would enjoy it. <laughs> you had to start taking vitamins after this one, huh? <laughs> Uh, and Nick moaning daddy is almost as good as when Zach does it. I agree. I... <laughs> Have you even heard that Zach, um, Zach do that? Not at all. You know, if surprisingly enough, in my own personal life, I don't go seeking out men moaning daddy in my ear, but that's all right. <laughs> I mean, to, to each their own. Does this have anything? Were you ever in your own? And this is a personal question. You don't have to answer it. Um, your stepdad or anybody like that, did you ever like look at one of your stepdad's friends, like their best friend showing up at your house and you were like, oh yeah, oh my goodness, no. yes. Never once. So, no. So you. Because you, technically my dad or my stepdad didn't really have a best friend. So. That makes it inconvenient. So it wasn't until later on in life that you figured out that you were really into your stepdad or dad's best friends like when you got into the I just genre like to read like stuff like that i don't not in my own life <laughs> i understand and so it's not it's nothing like you know you have experience in this like you knew going in like you just had to stumble into it um yeah okay i'm just doing some research here now as far as the daddy moaning thing what made you realize that you were into the daddy, another man saying, you know? Well, for a while, I wasn't into it. But I read, I listened to Susan Hawk and her Davies Rules series, finally. Right. Michael Dean does that one, does that series. Look, and I, I like, rather I like enjoyed the, it. I like, I enjoy when you watch this video later, if you could see the far away look in your eye that you get when you say the, and Michael Dean, and like you get this little slight <laughs> grin on your face and you look away like to the sky. I'm really enjoying that. Um, okay. So that's the first time you ever realized that you were into somebody moaning daddy like that. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, in, in case anybody hasn't checked out that series, it's the Davy series by, uh, by, uh, Susan, Susan not Susie. Hall. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's her contempt series. So it's not impreg, it's contempt. Um, not contempt. That's yeah. a whole different kind of thing. Right. Um, just to make but. sure. So uh, what, what was particularly good about little Nick J Russo doing? Was it his <laughs> moaning of daddy? Was it the story? <laughs> He makes pretty noises. And when you're now to define pretty noises <laughs> is a man <coughs> moaning in a deep voice, the word daddy. No, that's not, not just the deep voice. It's also like the, uh, the boy moaning daddy, which is like a, like a diva twink type thing. Like a what twink? Diva twink. Diva twink. Kind of. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> I now now that we've the got that defined, the flamboyant gay man. This is like market research for me. I don't. I mean, <laughs> I, um, I appreciate that. Well, uh, technically, so, I was going to say technically, this started off as a three. Did one and moan then, and die, or what happened? <laughs> well, it started off as a three, and then it went to a four after a couple of Skype sexting sessions and then it jumped to a five further on in the book but what made it a bullet breaker was the i guess the second to the last big sexy time scene which was just extremely hot so that's what uh, that's <laughs> it was like the said, second it was to last you, like you numbered them well, okay. it, the last scene was just the blowjob, so. Oh, well, yeah, that's, <laughs> you can't really break a bullet over a blowjob. Um, 
By the way, in 50, I just realized something, 50, 60 years, somewhere in there, our kids, kids, um, whoever's kids, kids, not necessarily mine. I'm like, maybe he's in, I don't, I don't fucking know what white chocolate is into, but anyways, 50 or 60 years from now, there's going to be somebody doing a podcast just like this. And they're going to be going through and they're going to be like, you know, it's the happy cabbage. And then they're going to be like, and a bullet breaker. And that's going to be an old timey saying for people 50, 60 years from now, it's going to be wonderful. We are making something today. We're making history. Um, that's how I like to see it anyways. So next, uh, no, we, we got that, the bullet breaker. I need a graphic for that, by the way. Next we have this. <laughs> I gave this one two bullets. Um, I know the bullet rating is low, but I do give it four and a half stars because the main, this was the, uh, the author's first MM romance book thing, sci-fi type book but i mean i really enjoyed it it kept my interest it was funny he did really well with it but the sexy times were not what the book was about zach did an amazing job telling the story and i will soon listen to book two well if you that's a, a good judge of how good it is. If you're moving through a series and you're actually going to go listen or read the second one, same thing, I guess. That That's a good sign. Uh, that means that, that it was, in fact, good. Um, from my experience in, in uh, selling my own books, typically um, the turnover from book one to book two is typically 50 to 60% somewhere in there. Um, so typically if somebody reads, let's say 100 people read or listen to your book, about half of them will move on to book two. Um, so you're saying this is good enough to move on? That's a very positive But of song. course, it's Zach. He, everything he pretty much touches is amazing. So is this specifically because of the way he moans the word daddy? Is that, I mean, I'm just checking. No, no daddies were involved in the book. Right. <laughs> just just no, checking. Zach just has an amazing voice. So I really do like his, uh, his audio books. Right, the delivery. Hopefully another uh, one will come out soon. I bet you it will. Um, then finally, we have... Da, da, da. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I wanted to keep this one a secret. I just so don't know why. So this was... Okay, I'm going to move <laughs> move this one up there for that. Okay, so you see, in, it's asked, this week, it's uh, Melissa Grambling, ask me about my secret, please. Now, at the end of the show, we finally get to it. This was your secret this week. Why were you... I don't understand I don't why. know. I honestly don't know. Yeah, you just wanted I'm people. I'm just like, to, no, I wasn't going to tell anybody, but why? But it, and only well, the person that knew was Tracy. We, so let's let's check it out here. What was your bullet rating on this book? It was five. Okay, so that's a pretty highly rated bullet rating. The on only this book. well, the only reason it wasn't a bullet breaker is because I was in there watching you do the book. Right. And my face obviously makes that like, no. you know, you can have sexy times <laughs> to a point, but then you see me and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa tap out. Uh, no, because whenever you do sexy times, I don't look at you. That makes perfect sense. Um, <laughs> I can't because it just make, would make me feel weird. It ruins weird. it. Right. It ruins it. Like if <laughs> no, you can it doesn't look, ruin it. Look it me in the eye. When, look me in the eye when you give me the bullet breaker. <laughs> It is kind of weird. I mean, I, I admit, um, but, but fair enough. My so is, is this the reason why you didn't want people to know that you were listening to this book this week? Is this because, because you were listening to me and you were like, looking me in the eye when you're I'm just, no, I'm looking uh, you in the eye. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, the theory that I have on why this makes it a little bit weird, um, is, is I'm a fly rink. A bald head apparently used to be called a fly rink. Just like a skating rink, it was a fly rink. So I am a fly rink. Um, it's it's another one. I, don't, I, anyway. I, didn't, I didn't write these things. I didn't make them up. It's there. Um, so <laughs> good, good job this wow. week. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, would, do you have any sort of review on Dragon Scholar? I can't remember if you've already well, done I did. Or not. You almost started to interrupt. <laughs> right. Well, then you were distracted by my fly rink. No. No fly rinks were involved in the making of this video. Um, no. The narrator was all growly and it was so hot. <laughs> I was worried about 
your voice during the whole thing with doing brand because you were like deep and growly and I figured it would hurt your throat. Right. But other than that, I first time with this author and all the food and sex you can have in one book. But at least no one got darted in the neck. <laughs> wow. Um Thank you. And yeah, we, we absolutely love Minerva Howe, Julia, and, and her wife, B.A. We, we love them to death. Um, and thank you all for hanging out. If you've made it to this point in the video, why? <laughs> Don't you have anything else to do? I mean, um, but Lisa, you did a great job in laying out the show this week. Um, and, and by the way, um, I, I'm back for my jeeping trip. It's all good. And in fact, in the old times, I would have been called a nose bagger. That was someone who takes a day trip to the beach, brings his own provisions, and doesn't contribute to at all to the resort that he's visiting. I guess that's not me, but I wanted so badly You're to be a nose You're entertained by all these. I think Great. they're fantastic, and I'm bringing them all back. I'm bringing them back. I'm a nose bag. Is there a few flyering. more you want to? Oh, I've is got a shit ton more? of them, but you know, I don't want to ruin them all right now because uh, I'm a butter and egg man. So, anyways. Um, <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Thanks for hanging out. Wave to the camera. We'll see you all next week. Have fun. <laughs>